Today we are starting this video out in my garden and no I am not going to be digging a pond, I'm out here because this is where I culture Daphnia. Now I shared a very short video of my Daphnia cultures and harvesting on Instagram recently and a few people sort of commented saying have you got a video on how to do this? And I didn't, so that is what I'm going to be showing you today. So my Daphne culture is this white tub here full of pretty dirty murky water with leaves, little seeds and all sorts of things falling in it. It's really not a clean way of culturing it, but it is a free way, easy way and yeah, it's my way. As you can see, it's in the corner of the garden that it's just full of old bits of hardscape, some wood for the fire and various pots and stuff that have been discarded here. And that's why I get away with it because otherwise this tub would look really ugly in the main part of the garden. So my first job is to actually empty this out and give it a good clean so I have a blank sort of canvas to start working with. But before I do that, I am going to net out some of my daphnia and keep it in this little white tub for a few days. Um, so I've got a starter culture ready for when I set this back up. Now, for those of you that don't already have a Daphne culture, you can buy a little bag from a local fish shop. You can order it online in the UK. You can get it from live aquatic food online. Um, and they'll supply you Daphne in small little plastic bags or even in bulk in some cases. And they, that can be sort of used as your starter culture to seed your tub. And from then on, they'll just sort of reproduce and fill your whatever size tub you have. So I am just going to take a bit of this water to use as my starter. As you can see, there's algae and all sorts of stuff in here. And then I'm just going to catch out the daphnia and transfer it across. As you can see, there is all this stringy sort of green algae in my culture, which does often end up in my harvest, which then could end up in my tanks. And I also don't want to introduce this to my tanks. This is going to take over. Um, so that's another reason for starting this culture over is I can give it a good scrub and try and get rid of a lot of this algae. So now I have my starter culture collected from here. I need to empty this water out. Now this has been sat out in the sun for a long time. So I reckon if I attempt to pick it up, as you can see, it's already starting to break here. This tub is probably going to just start to break up and start leaking, but I want to reuse it. So instead, I'm going to use a jug, which is just here, to remove the water slowly until it's lighter to carry. And I can throw it into the watering can so I can water my plants. It's a nice sunny day, so this water is going to be great for my plants. And yeah, this is going to be a pretty boring watch. So. Let's just put some music on and have a few clips of me watering the plants before we come back and finish cleaning out this bucket. Now, with a lot of the water out, you can see how much of this green stringy algae is stuck to the sides. So I have the perfect solution, some filter floss, and that will just scrape it all off, hopefully. And yeah, so it's gonna take a little while. After some serious scrubbing, the tub is now fairly white. And that is quite important because when the sides are covered in algae, the water straight away looks quite green. And we want to actually see if there's single celled algae in the actual water column, making it look green instead. And it's always quite difficult to tell when it is already covered in algae. So yeah, now we've got an empty box, it's time to fill this up. I'm gonna be using aquarium water. Um, so I'm gonna go and do some water changes. Uh, aquarium water has well, it's reusing the water, so it's good for the environment and good for my water bills. It's full of nutrients, so it's going to help the algae grow. 
and it doesn't have uh, chlorine in, which is going to kill the single-celled algae that we want to grow. So lots of reasons to use tank water. So here we are in the fish room, ready to do a water change on the knife fish tank. And as you can see, it's a pretty sad looking fish room. All the tanks have finally gone. If you didn't watch, I think it was my last upload about why these tanks are going, I'll leave a link in the end of the video and you can see what's happened here, why I've emptied all these tanks. Um, this rack is actually going to be picked up on Thursday and that then means I can finally get started with my Wio Shallow. So exciting things to come. Um, but yeah, looks very different if you didn't watch the last video. So I just thought I'd mention that. It's time to do the water change on the knife fish. So turn the filter off, turn the heater off, I'm gonna leave the light on so you can see what I'm doing, and let's get some water. At this point, I could add the Daphnia straight into this water, um, but they're going to eat the algae as quickly as it's going to grow. And while the Daphnia population will increase, it won't be so visually obvious for you guys to see how the algae will grow in these conditions. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this here for a few days. The next week is meant to be very, very nice weather, so there should be lots of sunshine and this should go green quite quickly. As soon as we can sort of visually see that this water is getting quite green in colour, obviously it's a bit tinted now, it came from the knife fish tank and that does have slightly tinted water. Um, but yeah, hopefully this will turn quite green over the next week or two. I'll be able to show you that sort of, if I remember, throughout the process and then we'll come back once it's green, add the Daphnia in, see how long it takes for them to clear that green water and then we'll take our first harvest and I'll document exactly how long this takes. So you guys know roughly how long it's going to take for you. But obviously we're reliant on sunlight and temperatures because it's outside so it's going to vary depending on where you are in the world, what time of year you're doing this and all those sorts of things. One thing I am going to do to speed the process along, this water should be full of nutrients anyway coming from the knife fish tank. They get lots of food, lots of frozen foods um, but I am just going to put some plant fertilizer into here just to help encourage the algae to grow. It has been two weeks and maybe a couple of days since I set up this bucket for my Daphnia and it has been a rather hectic couple of weeks for me. So I haven't filmed the progress of this turning green, but you can see now two weeks on, it is luminous green and ready for Daphnia. And in fact, I've already got loads of mosquito larvae in here that have started hatching. So I've already got live food without doing any extra work. So that is how easy live food production can be. Um, yeah, let's go get my Daphnia. And just like magic, we have the Daphnia culture. Um, now, like I said, I've had a manic couple of weeks, so I haven't actually tended to the Daphnia while they've been inside, they've just been left in here. So the culture has died off quite considerably, let's say, um, but there should be hopefully enough in there to start this going, but there's far less in here than there would be in a single bag that you could buy from your local fish shop. So, Gonna have to bear that in mind with how long it takes for them to get going in here it could be a little while so yeah nice and simply i'm just going to empty out the daphnia into the green water so yeah that is the daphnia now in their green water they do generally eat it quite quickly so i wouldn't be surprised if this starts clearing pretty quickly even with very few daphnia in there but anyway i don't know how long this is going to take but as soon as I see a visible difference to the culture, whether that's in the numbers of Daphnia or the colour of the water, I will come back and I will film the next part of this video. So the Daphnia culture has pretty much completely cleared now and it has been two and a half weeks since we added the Daphnia. It does look a little bit green, but that is just from the outside of the, well not the outside, the, the sides of the bucket. Uh, it's started to get covered in algae and that is what's making it look a little bit green. Um, but there is a lot of Daphnia and Mosquitia larvae in here. However, I don't think all of the clearing of this water is because of the Daphnia. We have had some horrendous weather in the last two weeks with a lot of rain. And as you can see, the water level in the bucket is right at the top. It is completely overflowed and probably quite a lot of the water 
and potentially some of the Daphnia has been lost. But there is still plenty of Daphnia for me to take my first harvest. So I've got a bit of water from my knife fish tank and I've got a net and let's just take some of the Daphnia. And now they're in the net, you can see that there is plenty of what looks to be adult sized Daphnia in this culture. And that was just from a very quick sweep of the net. So just ran back into the fish room because it has started raining yet again. Uh, it's an absolute nightmare. Summer is definitely over. Um, but yeah, back in the fish room, don't look up there because this is a different project. Uh, that's my shallow tank and that video will be out hopefully quite soon. It is almost ready to fill up, which is all very exciting. But anyway, we're here to feed our fish some Daphnia. So I'm going to feed my Borneo inspired tank. Um, I've just popped an extra light on there just to try and get decent footage of the Garamis and half weeks feeding. However, it's probably going to be a bit useless. So once I fed these guys, we will feed the showpiece aquascape for a really good feeding frenzy. I had limited success filming the liquid scrambles and half beaks in my Borneo tank, so let's put some Daphnia in my showpiece aquascape and hopefully we get a bit of a feeding frenzy. It's incredibly difficult to see the little Daphnia in and amongst all of the plants, but they are in there and I would say the blue neon resboras are the ones that are really picking them off the most. And there we go, that is how I culture and harvest Daphnia without spending any money. If you noticed a few changes to the showpiece aquascape, make sure you go back and watch my previous upload because it outlines all that has gone on in the last few months since the build. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the shallow tank build. That will be out very soon. I'm really looking forward to getting some fish in that tank, but I do first need to fill it up. Anyway, speak to you all soon.